this is my probably fourth attempt at making a video about this I've been meaning to show you guys uh, my uh, tabletop 3D scanner well, dual laser 3D scanner it's powered by FreeLSS as you've probably seen in my previous video this is a little statue I've been using to kind of try to get the scanner tuned up and uh, get reasonable scans with I figured I'd give a tour I made the table removable and I'll show you how uh, this part was from uh, the BQ scanner the one that uses an actual PC the back of it I designed on SketchUp and I figured what the heck uh, the whole thing NEMA, 20, uh, NEMA 17 big bearing clip um, I had to clean up the STLs for this because they were well poor um, the other end of the spectrum there's uh, I'm, I'm only using two threaded rods here let's uh, get this camera a little closer there we go only using two threaded rods here get it in focus there we go two threaded rods I made a little holder here that uh, holds the power brick uh, dual voltage 5 volt and 12 volt there's a little spacer here just holds it in alignment and uh, the actual power supply sits against this part it has the same U profile as this on the other end like so and that gives me the actual power supply plug port um, it's one of the reasons why this cable runs out so far out into this it's actually a Moldex connector that I uh, glued in two lasers these lasers are from Harbor Freight uh, they're meant to be a stick-on laser for like circular saws or whatever and um, but they I find they work quite well I had to open them and actually tune the optics a bit to get a nice thin line because otherwise it was all out of focus they're not very well put together lasers but five dollars a piece they were cheaper than buying them from eBay um, and I got them right away power switch the cameras in here a little clip-on connector to cover the camera and uh, the wires for the lasers are run along this track these screws I actually have to put in longer ones uh, this camera should be sitting about another 20 mil higher but that's neither here nor there there's a little fan here that helps with cooling there's ports over here <coughs> there's ports over here for the excuse me um, HDMI USB the video output for some reason I figured what the heck why not put the ports there and obviously the ports for the Raspberry Pi here a uh, little Tenda $8 connector the Raspberry Pi is inside um, for a table I, I, I wanted to 3 print one unfortunately mine started to warp and I got really frustrated and I stopped the print mid print and it didn't print this portion of it out which at that point it just 3D printed uh, just the inner portion, inner ring a little bit thinner and instead of gluing it I just used a single screw in the middle um, that kinda gives me a spot on where to find the center of this so I can get the lasers to intersect but the way it's designed it's this is not a tight fit it's just supposed to kind of sit here on the actual bearing over here and it just fits, uh, fits there nice and neat being that the surface of this wasn't all that great I just put some tape over it and uh, just like the creator of FreeLSS I'm using this, This is uh, I got this from the dollar store it's designed to inlay inside of kitchen cabinets so things don't slip it's just basically a non-slip mat laid it over, cut it with a blade and that's it um, searching for the little screw put the device in there now the software you guys have seen probably how FreeLSS looks like and this is it so I'm gonna hit the start scan option here and uh, you can actually see the lasers dancing and this is this will take a little while to scan depending on the settings it could be as little as five minutes or as long as an hour um, the software, uh, there, there's a lot of tweaking that 
I needed to do to get this to work because it's not the same dimensions as the original uh, FreeLSS, the Atlas 3D scanner. Actually, this is a little bit bigger. I played with the lens on there to get a proper focus to the middle of the table. And let me not put my fingers there because um, I'm testing out some higher settings for this. But overall, it's it's turned out to be a pretty decent project. I mean, I can almost call it finished. Just those two screws is what I need to make longer. I've yet to decide whether I want to 3D print like a spacer or something, and then make it taller that way or just uh, get longer screws uh, most likely I'll just get longer screws because well it's the easiest method of doing it everything's inside of the actual uh, box over there basically self-contained I can lift the whole thing even while it's scanning if I'm careful I will not tumble the stuff off of it like so and uh, it's not gonna affect it it's actually pretty sturdy I'm using a standard threaded rods I got from Home Depot. I think they were like three dollars. You only need one rod, really. I bought two, but you only need one rod. Cut it to size, and basically cut it in half, and then trim whatever else is left over to keep it nice and clean. Um, my next step on this project most likely will be those two screws. I might even construct an enclosure. I'm thinking about making it out of PVC and it'll probably be on my next installment and uh, adding lighting in there, controllable lighting because I find that uh, getting a decent scan with uh, indoor lighting seems to be difficult and uh, I get better scans at low light than I do at high higher light output not sure why that is but I'm hoping it has something to do with the actual reflection from the tape of the lasers we'll see find out. Uh, the actual software is being worked on so I think they it will get better with time. I really think it will get better with time. So we'll find out. Well I couldn't leave well enough alone. I was gonna make a short video. I guess it's gonna be a long one. Uh, I wanted to show you guys what I needed to do to get these lasers to perform properly. Um, one of the things is you gotta take them apart. Don't try to solder directly onto the lasers. This is how I damaged this one. And I had to buy another one because of my own stupidity. So what happens is these lasers, uh, once you take off this cap, there's a ring here. That ring will sit there. You don't need to take that off. I took it off because, well, this thing's already broken. I wanted to see how it was built. But um, there's... um, basically a lens here that lens is what creates the laser lines but the laser in here is not a dot it's actually a oval which is very weird what happens is if this laser is not aligned properly you get a really 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 fat line laser line and it's weak instead of it being focused in a nice bright sharp line you get a thicker less bright line not a good thing for scanning I would assume anyway. So what you do, these are actually glued down and um, what I actually did was literally using the tip of the plier gently push around until the glue breaks without breaking the lens. You don't want to break the lens because once you do you're gonna have a bad day. You're gonna need to replace the whole thing. Um, with that said, uh, the second modification that needs to happen to these is these things are designed to run on these small button cells and for one you can't really pulse a uh, battery like that you need to drill a hole on the side of this I'll include the STL of basically like it's just a part um, it's a cylinder you 3d print it's got a groove on the side and it's got two holes one on the top one on the bottom and that small cylinder what it's gonna do is uh, it's gonna hold two screws in it and then you just literally run the wires around it and uh, you tie it around the screws and you screw the screws down directly into the plastic you 3d print that part you, uh, you drill a hole approximately halfway down the barrel because the barrel this part of it is still laser 
So the barrel is only about an inch long. So measure from the back, about half an inch, center it out, and drill a hole in there. Just big enough for your wires. You run the wires from that barrel in, carefully pulling them out while you push it down. This thing, there's a spring inside of it. The end of it has got this little switch. You screw it down. It's all brass, which is actually pretty nice, and will keep the lasers nice and cool. I've left mine over 24 hours. It's been fine. And uh, you click it on, it'll sink in, and that's the end of it. You, you have... Uh, uh, you, you basically turn this from a battery powered laser to a wired laser and then you can wire it into your uh, uh, 3D scanner or I should say into the Pi's uh, uh, circuit board with that said I like the fact that there's already like a little tooth here and everything else so I can actually change the angles of the lasers as I need them without really going too crazy and makes uh, 3D printing parts a little bit simpler when you just you know buy a laser that already has a mount for it but as I said out of uh, three that I bought uh, two of them have had this uh, lens misaligned the third one I opened just to make sure that you know that was the sharpest it could possibly be so only one of them was really aligned properly and uh, this is actually a pretty decent uh, source of parts. Um, you get your laser, obviously. And you also get three neodymium magnets here. If you want to use them for your 3D printer. Uh, as Hall Effect uh, stops. You get three small magnets. You can just pry them out. The glue is not all that great on these. So you can just pull them out, I'm sure. So, that's about it. Um, Today I can't seem to leave well enough alone. Um, this is the actual interface. This is our pipe monitor. And these are my statistics. There's a CPU load. Uh, free LSS is really not taking up a lot of CPU. I'm seeing uh, around a 2. 4 is really maximum for 4 threads. So, 1.5, 1. And a half, one is when I see it when it's doing the processing but going back to the actual software um, I mean you have three buttons scan camera and settings settings you can do your setup you can check for update there's no updates available for this at this moment and uh, under settings I am running uh, FreeLSS 1.2 apparently so in either case I did a bunch of scans and one of the best ones that I uh, that came out was actually one that was done nearly in the dark and this is what the PLY file looks like um, I have I'm not very familiar with mesh labs so I, I'm still learning but the actual detail is pretty good like the surface of the scan is pretty damn decent and this was at uh, 1.9 megapixel video mode I'm expecting once the kinks are worked out the 5 megapixel still mode will probably give some very very nice results but until then I would recommend using the 1.9 megapixel mode uh, because the software for some reason it freaks out at higher resolutions but uh, in either case, um, let me do a select all, I guess. And you can actually, oops. Um, you can actually see it. Uh, um, thanks for watching and please subscribe.